Poolville, Maryland, September 12th. Dear parents, it is with pleasure that I take the present opportunity of writing to you. We have returned to camp after enjoying the pleasure of being on picket duty 11 days. I was glad to get back so as to get my writing materials so that I can write to you and the rest of the folks. We are stationed here in General Stone's Brigade to protect the code of observation which is right in our camp. At most, it is a very important point, indeed as it commands a view of the whole country round, about for some 20 or 25 miles. You are requested not to tell anybody about this, for it is against orders to write anything about the movements of troops or where they are stationed. To send the letter to you, and we cannot get a chance to go out to camp for anything at all, or come down here to stay two days. The next day they sent us rations for five days more, and so they have keep us along today. They have sent me two days more rations. The regiment is under marching orders, and very likely we shall stay here till they march our, our station between the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal and the Potomac River. The strip of land is about 50 or 75, 75 foot aside. The river is 1,000 or 500 yards wide. On the other side is stationed the rebel picket. They say they have orders not to fire on us. Orders are open on them, so we are talk back and forth and that they are kind of shy of each other and keep a good lookout. I am just getting over one of those comfortable things called boils. Oh, they are pretty things, of course. This was the biggest one. I believe that I have had without it. It was that one on my knee. It was right on the cord of my leg in the fat part so that it drained my leg as that up and I looked as though it had. I had one short leg. The captain is very kind. He told me not to do anything till it got perfectly well. He is far different than from what father thought he would be. A better and kinder man never was seen than he has been since we have been here. We are getting lazy as old hogs. We don't have anything to do at all through the day, only lay round, eat, read, and do as we are wont to. We have been three or four miles some days to see the country. It is splendid country, flowers that have to try very hard to get them to spro spring elves and grow in the fields here and blossom most splendidly here. We have made one capture since we have been. It is a fine-looking Negro boy named Tom Foyard. He is 21 years old and cost his master $1,000. The folks around here say he would probably, in good times now, $1,500. So you can see he is quite a prize. His master is a scout and courier in the Rebel Army. His name is Belt. Yesterday we had six cannon come down a little ways from here in Argon to throw you some bombs over towards Leesbury, which is two and a half Two miles and a half from Ari, there is 2,000 more stationed there at the heart, is that notorious rebel Johnson. Tuesday night, 23,000 of our men crossed the chain bridge and next into Virginia. Very likely you have heard that circus here before this. I have written one letter to Worcester and I suppose you have heard it of it by this time. I wish you would write. To Grandmother Zadok and Julia and tell them that I shall write as soon as I get where I can conveniently, besides not being any conveniences, there is no paper which I can get at present. I hope we shall get through here soon so that I can get my paper for when I was not doing anything else I might be writing. Goodbye my love to all you again and up a great quantity of it for yourselves. Father, now do write and send some newspapers to your loving son Hiram. Pick a guard September 6th. Dear parents, I hope you will excuse me. I have not written to you before, or at least not sent a letter before, for I have got a letter written set to camp, which will take you a good while to read at least. I left one there eight days ago. It covers over ten pages. It is pretty fine writing, too. We have been in Poolsville but two days when we had ordered to get ready to go out five miles and pick a guard in the hurry I forgot. And we, the Minnesota Regiment and the Bulldogs, 15th Regiment Mass V, Around whilst we were on picket, one of the secessionist picket came over and took dinner with some of our boys, and they had quite a time. He belonged to the Mississippi Tigers, 13th Regiment. He was at the Bull Run right and said we had whipped them twice nicely only for the cowardly actions of our troops. He says they have been in Serval four months and have not received a cent yet, and if they do not receive their pay by the middle of this month, they shall start for home. It seems by report in the Washington papers that they were apparently smashed their guns and started for home, but I think this is doubtful for they were at the river Monday night. Mother writes that she is going to youth reading. I hope she will enjoy herself, and she says she does not receive any letters from me. I do not see the reason of it, for this is the sixth one that I have written, and it is only five. W. Book sends his respects to you. Hiram.